Hi everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're looking at germ management in the new Outbreak update for Oxygen Not Included. The new Outbreak update adds a variety of new buildings to the game, as well as some new challenges to deal with, specifically in the form of germs and diseases. Your game begins in the core biome, and it's basically a sterile environment. There's no germs present, so you don't have to worry about them initially when you first start the game. But as your colony grows and expands, you'll encounter germs that are part of the environment, and also those germs that you are making yourself through the process of just living. You can find the germs in this overlay that are located at the top right. So when you click on the germ overlay, it will show you any germs that are present in the area. There are currently two different types of germs you might find. Food poisoning and slime lung. At some point in the future, there might be additional updates that add other germs and other diseases to the game. However, these are the two that you have to deal with initially. As your colony expands, you'll start to encounter germs that you've created in your own environment, as well as those that you find in the general environment around your colony. Managing these germs is really important in order to ensure that your colony survives. Now, if you're not familiar with the strategies that are needed to manage those germs, it could be kind of a daunting task because your duplicates constantly get sick as they encounter different objects. But with a few simple steps, it's actually fairly, fairly easy to manage the germs, and it just adds another layer of complexity to the game rather than making it super difficult. While there aren't any germs you're initially encountering in the game, you will start to create your own, and the first of those that you'll have to deal with is food poisoning. Food poisoning germs will appear as yellow on your germ overlay. Now these germs are specifically produced by using the bathroom. Whether that's the outhouse or using the lavatory, you'll still produce uh, the food poisoning germs in those locations. Consequently, if you're if you're using a compost along with your outhouse, you'll also notice that there's often going to be a lot of food poisoning germs located there, specifically because of the polluted dirt that you're removing from your outhouses and processing in the compost. This is the only source, really, of, of food poisoning germs in the game at present, and it's the one that you're going to have to deal with initially. There are a number of ways to deal with, the with food poisoning germs that are relatively simple, the easiest of which is to ensure that you have wash basins next to your bathroom so that whenever your duplicates use the facilities, they'll consequently wash their hands. These wash basins will remove up to 480,000 surface germs from the duplicates, and it basically takes fresh water, and, and when they wash their hands, it will produce polluted water. This polluted water contains germs, so you don't want to mix it in with any of your, any of your other water sources. Your duplicates will load the wash basin using the, the water bottler and they'll remove bottles of polluted water from this and then you want to empty those. In order to empty your wash basin, you'll need a bottle emptier. This bottle emptier can be set to empty either polluted water or regular water. In this case, I have this one set for polluted water, so whenever they, they fill up the wash basins, which are actually located right above this, whenever they fill up the wash basin, they'll take the bottle of polluted water down here, they'll place it on the bottle emptier, and that water will then empty down into the reservoir. I have this re reservoir set up specifically separate from the rest of my colony so that when they're emptying the germs in here, I've got a very high concentration of food poisoning germs located in this water, but it's not mixing with any other water within the colony, so that's okay. The second way that you help control the germs within your colony is within the germ overlay, and this is something that's normally turned on as a default. I turned it off here just for the per uh, for example. But with this box checked, you can set the amount of germs that your colony, your duplicates will try and disinfect your colony at. So this one is currently set to 10,000 germs, but you can set it to higher values. I think it's up to a million. Uh, so we'll set it for 100,000 germs. So whenever the duplicates encounter a, a scenario where there are 100,000 germs in any given place, they'll run around to try to disinfect it. As long as you have that job turned on for whatever duplicates you're using. There are two basic ways that your, your duplicates interact with the germs. In one scenario, they'll have surface germs, and this comes from coming into contact with any substance or surface that has germs on it. So that could be either slime lung that you're getting from the environment and pieces you're picking up, or if they've used the facilities and they didn't wash their hands, they might have surface germs on. These surface germs can be transferred to other objects, so if they're building things, uh, or if they're interacting with other objects and they have surface germs on them, they transfer those over. These surface germs are what are cleaned by the wash basin, you can also clean off surface germs using the shower. Again, remembering that any polluted water that comes out of this will contain germs, so you don't want to mix it with other water reservoirs. And you can also use the, the hand sanitizer. However, that's not something that I typically use, only because it requires bleach stone, which produces bleach, or sorry, which produces, chlor uh, produces chlorine gas. Uh, it's a fairly limited quantity item to find, and it just seems to be less easy to manage. It's apparently more effective than using the wash basins, although they, the tooltips indicate they both clean off the same number of germs. The other scenario is when your duplicate is a germ host. And this is where they've consumed germs that are inside their body and they can't be cleaned off. For food poisoning, this comes specifically from eating the food that contains food poisoning germs. Or they had a quantity of surface germs and they consumed food and transferred some of those surface germs in, into their body. 
As they build up a certain amount of these germs, you can see that it will impact their immune system. So this duplicate Nisbet that's in this colony has 3,123 germs and, and dropping that are from food poisoning. Their immune system is dropping at minus 9% per cycle. On the top left, you can see the general immune systems of, of each person within your colony. So you can see Nisbet's at 92%, while the rest of the colony is at 100%. As each cycle goes by, Nisbet's immune system will drop further. Now, initially, it's not, it's not really a big problem. This is just an indicator that they have germs. They're not necessarily sick just yet. But as the game progresses, they'll get sick if their immune system gets down to zero. Food poisoning of germs will live at any temperature range between minus 25 degrees Celsius up to 75 degrees Celsius. So one of the ways you can try to destroy the food poisoning germs is to apply heat. If you can get the heat up above 75 degrees Celsius, you'll kill off all the germs in that area. So if you have a means to boil the water that contains the germs, that can help destroy them. Uh, similarly, the very hot environments. However, an environment that hot would also scorch the duplicate that has the, those germs on, their, on the surface. This won't help with germs that they're already hosting, but only the germs that are on the surface. So it's best when you're trying to clean off objects or you're trying to clean off the polluted the polluted water. If the duplicate should, should contract food poisoning, it'll last for one and a half cycles and will cause vomiting. Also gives them uh, additional trips to the bathroom that they have to take, their bladder efficiency is lowered and it lowers their, you know, their general stamina. Food poisoning is not really the more dangerous of the two illnesses right now. Slime lung is far more dangerous because it will actually kill the duplicate, whereas food poisoning is really just an inconvenience. Really the biggest thing to remember when trying to control food poisoning is just ensure you have wash uh, wash basins stationed around your colony. Uh, you can choose the direction that they'll they'll wash with when they when they move past it. So with this wash basin is set to direction where if they're passing from the right side to the left side and they contain surface germs, they'll stop and wash their hands. But you can set it to the right, you can set it so if they go in both directions, whatever works for your scenario. Try to control where you have your bathrooms located so that there's only a single entrance in and out. And make sure that you have enough wash basins for the uh, for what's contained within that area. In this situation, I actually have too few wash basins to control the amount of germs that can be produced in this space. Because, theoretically, I could have a duplicate in each of the, the outhouses, as well as duplicates at each of the two compost piles. And if they run past and there's another duplicate using the wash basin, they won't stop and use it because it's occupied. You'll also want to be particularly careful when you're producing food for your duplicates to eat because if your micro musher or your cook station or the person who's preparing the food has a, a large quantity of surface germs, they'll transfer that to the food and then they can get the other duplicates sick as a result. This colony in particular is, is fairly well distributed in terms of uh, germ management. There are a couple places of slime, uh, slime lung that you can see in here. And this refrigerator, for example, contains surface germs on the lice loaf that's contained within it, which could get the duplicates sick. But for the most part, if you have enough wash stations around, the food poisoning germs are actually very easy to control. The much more difficult germs to manage tend to be slime lung. It'll show up green on your overlay, and you can see there's very high concentrations out here. The slime that's contained in the swamp biome will often have in excess of 1 million germs, which is actually more than you can clean off in a single washing with any wash station. The wash station cleans off about 480,000 germs. So generally, you'd have to have two of them in a row if your duplicate was interacting them for a long period of time with the slime that has that high concentration. You'll find these germs anywhere there's a swamp biome, and it's contained with. You'll find it within uh, anything that's growing in there. It generally won't. Uh, it won't infest the metals. So anything that's gold amalgam out here, as well as the polluted water, will be free of it. These germs can also be airborne. So you can see they're in the polluted oxygen here, and they'll continue to multiply in the polluted oxygen, where it can be breathed in by any duplicate that might be interacting with it. Fortunately, the slime lung germs are only in the swamp biome, so unless they introduce another form of germs, the other biomes will be, will be clear of them unless you introduce those germs. Slime lung survives in a temperature range between 10 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, so if you can get the temperature low enough so that it's below 10 degrees, the germs will start to die off, and you can actually kill off the germs that are contained in a particular area. In general, in the early part of the game, you want, you want to try to avoid the swamp biome because of the germs that are present there. They're in very high concentrations, and it takes, it takes next to nothing for your duplicates to get sick. Once you start working in the swamp biome, it's almost guaranteed your duplicates will become ill. So you want to implement a couple of control measures to try to manage how many people are going to be in the swamp biomes at any given time, control the introduction of those germs to your environment. Consequently, if you need to expand early on, you're better expanding into the, into the purple biomes, or if you can find a frost biome, such as the one that I found up here, or cold biome rather, then these are the better places to expand initially, and try not to expand into the swamp until you need to. Fortunately, you can find deposits of algae if you're trying to make uh, use algae for oxygen in the other biomes, and you can find some very large ones in the purple biome, so you have a source of that that's outside of the, the swamp biome. 
But the one material that you can't get in other biomes is gold amalgam. And that's certainly a useful, uh, useful metal when you're building uh, any kind of an energy system or something that's going to be subjected to high quantities of heat. Because it has a specific benefit for uh, for overheat, at plus 5,000% it adds to the overheat temperature, which is very useful for anything that's going to be really hot. You can do without these initially. At some point you're going to want to go after the gold, uh, the gold amalgam or the slime that's in there in order to produce additional algae and that sort of thing within your colony. But try not to access the swamp biome early on, and you'll st and that will help avoid introducing slimeling in your colony. And you'll be able to expand quite significantly without without going to that length, and just control the measures with the food poisoning. When you do get to the point where you want to expand out into a swamp biome, I suggest using some form of an airlock that can be used to control the environment that your duplicates are going into, and also to limit the number of people that can access the swamp biome. These doors all have the ability now to have the access set on them, so you can you can set the door so the duplicates can pass in one direction or the other, or potentially not pass through the door at all. So in this scenario, this door is set so that only Rowan has the ability to pass back and forth through the door, and consequently, Rowan's the only one whose immune system is is uh, diminishing at the moment. Within this airlock, I've filled it with chlorine gas. The chlorine gas will kill off surface germs at a at a, at a fairly quick rate. It will work for both slime lung as well as for food poisoning germs so you could use it on either however the only one that's really dangerous in this scenario is the slime lung so i generally will use it in the airlock scenario i also have uh, i also like to set up storage so that i have it filled with chlorine gas as well so that anything that you might store in these containers while it might have germs when you place it in there over time the uh the chlorine gas will help kill off those germs and ensure you maintain a sterile environment this will, this will help prevent introducing slime lung germs into your colony where you might have brought in materials that contain slime lung and store them in a container and then they'll start to propagate and expand from there. Slime lung doesn't like to live in clean oxygen, so fortunately you'll find that within your colony, as long as you have clean air and you haven't been running a colony that's based on polluted oxygen, the slime lung won't propagate and expand anyway. It'll kind of help control it. However, anything you can do to stop introducing the slime lung into the colony will, will be to your benefit. When bringing in materials, you can use the new ore scrubber building that they've added to the game. This building requires a flow of uh, chlorine gas, so you will have to find a chlorine geyser or a very large source of chlorine. As you can see on the gas overlay, I'm piping in the chlorine gas both into the, uh, the ore scrubbers that they'll use to clean materials they bring in from outside of the colony, and also to this vent so that it can fill up the space that's in here. I have my particular airlock contained with a smaller airlock on the left-hand side that contains two deodorizers so that any of the polluted oxygen that's outside of the door, when they open it, it a certain amount of it is going to come in here. And that will be cleaned by the deodorizer and turned into fresh oxygen. And then as they pass through the second door, they get into the chlorine environment, which will help kill germs. On the other side, in order to control the chlorine gas and prevent it from flooding into my base, I've used a water lock. Now this water lock has an unfortunate downside in that as they pass through it, they get a debuff called Sopping Wet, which adds stress to them. So they, they'll increase their stress rate at 20% per cycle. If you have your colony well equipped, this one is just a test colony, so I didn't, uh, I didn't do any fancy artwork in it. However, if your colony is set up with a, with a high decor, then this shouldn't present too great of a challenge because it'll, it'll increase the rate at which they're accumulating stress, but they'll still be decreasing stress all throughout the inside of the colony. So you shouldn't have you shouldn't have too many troubles managing that. As they pass out of the airlock, I have also a number of wash basins that can clean off the surface germs. So that you can see Frankie at present. Well, he has no surface germs because he's just cleaned them off, but he's washing them into this water. So now this the polluted water in here will also contain slime lung, and so does the surface of the of, of the building itself. In your germ overlay, if you have disinfect. Uh, if you have the automatic disinfect turned on, the duplicates will run around and disinfect the buildings for you. This is an update that came out uh, after the initial release of the, uh, the Outbreak update. But they'll run around and clean the building for you. Whether that's any of the, the building pieces that they're interacting with, or the walls themselves. Any portion of the, the structure that's coming in contact with the, the slime lung bearing material outside of your colony will gradually pass those germs into the tile, and those germs theoretically can move into the inside of your colony as well. Now, they don't like to, as I said before, they don't like to float around in clean oxygen, so as long as your oxygen is clean and breathable, it shouldn't present too great of an issue. And they'll also run around and disinfect that for you, but to avoid this scenario, you can simply dig away the, the material that's next to the building so it's not touching it. So here you can see the slime lung is passing through the tiles in this space, but again, it's all a chlorine environment in here, so it's no risk. Below this section of the building, because the slime lung containing material doesn't actually come in contact with the tile, 
The transfer rate into the tile is very, very low. This, this is all basically normal with zero surface germs. By using a number of different control measures, you can try to control how many of the germs your duplicates are coming in contact with and rotate your duplicates into the slime lung, uh, slime lung areas. But inevitably, somebody's going to get sick, as Rowan has gotten sick here. He has slime lung, and if it doesn't get treated within 10 cycles, he will die. In order to treat him, you're going to need some sort. You're going to need to set up a medical facility. With the new update, there's a, there's a new requirement that med beds are located within a certain amount of, of distance between some form of a bathroom, whether it's an outhouse or a lavatory, and then some source of food, whether it's a refrigerator or just a, like the food storage crate. So in this case, um, when you click on the med bed, you can see the effect that gro glows around the bed, which looks very similar to uh, when a, a duplicate was sneezing. In order to treat your duplicate, you just want to click on the med bed and to get the assigned med bed, and then choose the person who's going to be assigned to the bed. You can see with Rowan in the medical bed that he has he has a critical illness, so he has slime lung. This uh, this duplicate's chest congestion is making it difficult to breathe, so breathing change minus 1% per second, athletics are lower, does productive coughing, and he'll die in 10 cycles. He hasn't currently been treated by anyone, and it was contracted by, polluted, by breathing polluted oxygen, so you can also see the source of where they got it from. He requires aid, and he'll die in 9.6 cycles now if he doesn't get treated. Now that he's in the medical bed, one of the other duplicates should come over and provide treatment. I don't want to know what they're doing with the thermometer, but nevertheless, they use the thermometer multiple times and they'll provide treatment. What this will do is allow the duplicate to recover. It will reduce their tr their recovery time from 10 cycles, which would normally kill them, down to a period that's only about 4 cycles. Within that 4 cycle period, they'll recover from the illness so the slime lung will go away. And once the slime lung has gone away, they'll gradually start to increase their immunity. The only thing you can do for these duplicates is keep them out of contact with the other germs. So you'll need to block them off so that once they're off the medical bed, they can no longer go out into the into the swamp biome to come in contact with slime lung and try to control slime lung within your colony. So as you can see now in his tooltip, it says that uh, duration remaining 3.1 cycles. So he'll recover in 3.1 cycles. And if he hadn't been treated, he still it still shows the period of time that he would have died in. The best thing you can do when managing your colony, though, is just trying to prevent too many duplicates from getting that sick. Make, make use of the doors that are in here by controlling the access so that you're, you're controlling the duplicates that are going in and out and cycle them out so you're not constantly using the same duplicate and you can keep their immunity level relatively high. If you look out in the swamp biome in this polluted oxygen, you can see there's a, there's a pretty high concentration of the germs. Uh, something around fifteen or 16,000 germs per tile is, is in this area. It's not as much as the actual surface itself where there's over a million germs. However, this is where they're breathing in those germs and getting, it, uh, getting them into their system. So you can also try to control their ac the interaction with the germs from this space. Slime lung doesn't like to live in clean oxygen, so if you can clean this oxygen, you can reduce the germ count. Cleaning up the polluted oxygen can kind of be a daunting task because the polluted water that's in the space and any slime you might have dug up will continue to produce polluted oxygen. But you, you see here already, I just put in a, a number of deodorizers to start converting this into, uh, into clean air. And there's already been a dramatic reduction in the airborne germs that are in here. So if you can actually clean out the space and have it relatively clean, that can help uh, control infection as well. If they're digging through the slime and whatnot in order to harvest, they're still going to come in contact with a high quantity of germs, so you won't really be able to control that. But at least moving in and out of this zone, they won't come in contact with as many airborne germs. They're already down over in this space. They're down to only a few hundred germs from 16,000, so it cleans up relatively quickly. Alternatively, you can also pump chlorine gas into the space and it will accomplish the same outcome. That, in turn, will also disinfect the very surface, uh, the surface germs that are on the very uh, the very edge of the environment around the, the gas as well, because it will kill off some of those surface germs as well. You can also make use of cold temperatures to help control a slime lung, but this is much more difficult to manage. Uh, if you have a cold biome, you can, for example, destroy the insulation between the two zones, and the cold from the cold biome will sort of cool off the, the edges of the swamp biome, but you can't really get this to penetrate too deeply because the, there's just too much heat that's produced in the interior of the swamp biome. But if you look on the edges here where the cold has come in contact with it, the germs have already been uh, have already been eliminated in terms of surface germs on the, on the slime that's on the very edge of this space after it destroyed the insulation that was between the two. It takes a fair amount for it to drop. As you can see here, this one's um, this one is, is declining, and, and but it's also, it's also multiplying at the same time because the temperature is at 19 degrees. You need to get the temperature down below 10 degrees to actually kill off the germs that are in that in, in that particular environment. Uh, alternatively, you could use other means of cooling. For example, you might use a wheeze, multiple wheeze wards. However, getting the temperature down low enough to actually kill off a significant number of germs in a large space isn't terribly feasible. But you could use this in other parts of your base to keep the temperature below 10 degrees Celsius so that the germs simply can't survive there. 
Ultimately, with a little bit of preparation, managing the germs in the game isn't that difficult. It's going to be a daunting task initially because you're just not sure exactly how to manage it, and once your duplicants get sick, it takes a very long time for them to recover. But an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. To summarize, essentially you want to control food poisoning by ensuring that your duplicates have places to get clean. That could be wash stations that are located near bathrooms and near uh, cooking facilities. Make sure you have duplicates that are walking around uh, disinfecting areas that might have become infected with the germs. And just control the flow of germs that they might be ingesting to keep them healthy. That port should be very easy to manage. When you're expanding, expand first into areas that don't contain slime lung. Choose other biomes and expand in those areas. When you do ultimately have to expand in the areas that contain the slime lung, make sure you're well prepared with things like ore scrubbers, something to control the environment, whether it's uh, something like an airlock so that you don't get the germs passing into your colony, and ensure that you're not allowing for, uh, for polluted oxygen to exist within your base. Make sure that you have a medical facility set up so that when somebody gets sick, you have the means to treat them. And make use of the chlorine gas to, to help destroy the germs as much as possible. And make use of settings on the doors to control access in and out of different areas so that you can control which duplicates are moving into those infected spaces and cycle them out so that you're not constantly using the same duplicates. If you can, if you can do all of those as you're, as you're building out your colony, you'll find, that people, you'll find that your duplicates generally won't get sick and it'll be infinitely easier to manage the germs. I hope this tutorial has been useful for you and that it does help you get past some of the challenges you might be having with the germs in the game. This is only a few of the ways that you can try to manage those germs and some of the ways that I've used to manage them myself. There are probably many other mechanisms out there that people are using as well, but I do hope this does provide some use for you. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.